invite you now to turn to the Gospel of Luke, Luke chapter 7. I want to read verses 1 through 10 for your hearing from a NIV translation of the Bible. That's New International Version. And as we read this word, we pray that it will be, again, something that will illumine your heart, mind, and spirit. Let us read the Gospel together. The Bible says, for when Jesus had finished saying all this in the hearing of the people, he entered Capernaum. And there a centurion servant whom his master valued highly was sick and about to die. The centurion heard of Jesus and sent some elders of the Jews to him, asking him to come and heal his servant. But when they came to Jesus, they pleaded earnestly with him. This man deserves to have you do this because he loves our nation and has built our synagogue. So Jesus went with him. He was not far from the house when the centurion sent friends to say to him, Lord, don't trouble yourself, for I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. This is why I did not even consider myself worthy to come to you. But say the word and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority with soldiers under me. I tell this one go, and he goes, and that one come, and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him, and turning to the crowd following him, he said, I tell you, I have not found such great faith even in Israel. And then the man who had been sent returned to the house and found the servant well. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And I want to call your attention to verse 9 of this pericope, for it serves as the background and the backdrop for where we take our Genesis point. And Jesus says in verse 9, when he heard this, he was amazed at the crowd. And turning to the crowd, following him, he said, I tell you, I have not found such great faith even in Israel. I have not found such great faith even in Israel. We start in a new series of sermons now, my friends, this month, and that title of that sermon series is Exercise an Extraordinary Faith. And today, I want to lift up this text and for a brief moment, preach and teach on our subject, going the extra mile. Going the extra mile. My friends, I want to share with you a life principle and maybe introduce a concept that which I believe, y'all, uh, will strengthen your testimony and add value to those to which you encounter. And here it is, helping others can oftentimes be a way of helping yourself. Let me say that again. Helping others, y'all, being of some use and coming uh, to the assistance of someone else, it can be and oftentimes it will be a way of helping yourself. If you believe that, type amen right there in the chat box. For I want to illustrate this point to you because I want to share with you the results of a study of 132 patients with multiple sclerosis, where researchers formed two groups. One of the groups were to meet weekly to learn coping skills, and another of the groups were to meet monthly to receive support from another with multiple sclerosis. And the goal, y'all, of these study groups were to measure the progression, shall we say, on how they would cope, what was their coping skills, and hearing from other MS sufferers. Well, the surprise of the findings of this study, y'all, found out that neither group performed as well as did as the five MS sufferers who had been trained to offer support. Let me say that again. 
uh, the results, y'all, neither of the groups, the one meeting weekly or the one meeting monthly, uh, y'all, the sample study revealed that the coping skills were not advanced as much as the five MS sufferers who had been trained to offer support. You see, the study found, y'all, that giving support improved health more than receiving it. Those five MS sufferers, y'all, who led these groups felt a dramatic change in how they viewed themselves and life. Depression went down while self-confidence and self-esteem went up. The main researcher, y'all, said these people had undergone a transformation, a spiritual transformation, shall we say, that gave them a refreshed view on who they were. In other words, caring for others brought healing to the caregivers. Somebody say amen. So now back to my opening statement, y'all. Helping others can oftentimes be a way of helping yourself. Being, uh, in some, being of some use, shall we say, and coming to the assistance of someone else can be, and oftentimes it will be, a way of helping yourself. Let me share with you another story. For on April the 7th, last year, 2020, the last day that Bill's Cafe in Naples, Florida, was open before it had to close by the governor's order because of the coronavirus pandemic, one of the restaurant's regular customers walked to the owner, Bill Sally, with two envelopes. He presented each envelope to Bill. One had Bill's name on it, and one had the employee's name on it. And Bill Sally said it was so kind of him to do this, for we were hurting as a company, we were hurting, the employees were wondering how they were gonna make ends meet, but, but the content of those envelopes, y'all, was not enough to help the restaurant employees or the restaurant survive. So a week later, this same customer called Bill Sally and presented him a very important option. He said, Bill, would you be interested in sending 100 sandwiches across the street to the local hospital, the Naples Community Hospital? Sally said, before this person could finish the sentence, he said, I'm in. You see, the customer, y'all, who asked to remain anonymous then gave Sally about $40,000 during the time his restaurant was closed. You see, the, the, the thing that Sally did not recognize that while his restaurant was closed to the public, it was open to the power of Almighty God. And this individual, y'all, gave $40,000 so that Sally Bill's Cafe, y'all, could make sandwiches for the employees at the Naples Community Hospital. So here again, please, what I'm, what I'm saying, Helping others, y'all, can oftentimes be a way of helping yourself. Being of some use to someone else and coming to their assistance, y'all, can be, and oftentimes it will be a way of you helping yourself. And you see, my friends, this morning, on the first Sunday of Black History Month, before we go any farther, I want to pause here and give thanks to all of those who are helping somebody else. If you are helping somebody else or you know that someone is being helped, I want you to type amen in the chat box. Will you just type help somebody else right there? Will you type I thank God for the help that somebody is giving? me. I want to show appreciation and extend my gratitude to everyone who is offering y'all a helping hand, everyone uh, providing assistance, everyone uh, sharing your resources, and everyone showing up to make a difference. For those running errands, thank you. For those buying groceries, 
Thank you for those teaching children at your dining room table. Thank you for those frontline workers, health care providers, work from home mamas and daddies, and the FedEx and the Amazon truck drivers. I want to say thank you for folk giving shots and for folk giving tests for the 911 responders and the 311 operators. I want to say thank you for people stocking shelves for people running the cash register, for people doing mission, and for people making service come to you today, YouTube and Facebook. I want to say thank you. I want to thank all of those who are doing great things to add value to somebody else. Yet now, I, I, I don't want to stop with a general thank you, but I want to go deeper if I could, and I want to go bigger if I may, with a thank you to the people who have gone the extra mile. Y'all, I want to say thank you in a major way and give kudos to those who have gone the extra mile, not a particular vocation, not a select industry, not just school teachers and administrators, not just frontline workers, but folk who go early and stay late, folk who skip lunch and even work for free. I want to give a highlight, y'all, for those who have gone the extra mile, extra mile folk going where it's necessary to give an expected service in order to please somebody else. Extra mild folk who want to intentionally do something to bring value to those who need it the most. Extra mild folk who know, you know who you are. Uh, they try harder and they work smarter. They do what is required and in order to make life better for somebody else. And y'all believe it or not, found in the Bible is such type of a person. And, and, and I'm not talking about uh, the prophets or one of the disciples or even Jesus Christ himself. I'm talking about a, a army officer, major, shall we say, who goes the extra mile. And according to Luke, Jesus says, because of his faith, He's never seen anything like that in all of Israel. Let's go to the text because in Luke chapter 7, y'all, we get the story of the centurion's faith. <laughs> the centurion, y'all, is a Roman officer who is now in occupied Israel in, in the Jewish community. Now, recognize the Jews really didn't like the Roman soldiers in their occupation, in their community, but this particular story shows some love for a stranger. Somebody hear what I'm saying? This particular story shows some appreciation for those who on some occasions have been abusive and offensive, but now we see how God can still hit a straight lick with a crooked stick and give power to those who love the Lord. You see, uh, this centurion, y'all, was a Gentile, and, and he, had a, he had participated and demonstrated a special kind of love to the Jews, for he is responsible for building the synagogue in Capernaum. Hear what I'm saying? This Roman soldier who was over a hundred individuals in his squad, part of a 600-person uh, regiment, this individual was responsible for building the edifice where the Jews were worshiping. Many Gentiles, y'all, were drawn to the Jewish faith and religion because of the moral teachings. They believed in the monotheistic God, Reverend Donna. They believed in the power that God could come down. The Jewish religion, y'all, was attractive to the Gentile community. However, there was not full conversion to Judaism. I don't know because of the, 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 the laws of culture, the laws of diet, or maybe the circumcision. I don't know what kept them away, but they didn't jump all in. Nevertheless, this, the, the, this centurion, however, got, got, got favor with the Jews, and the favor he got with them allowed him to come to Jesus, or shall we say, send a message to Jesus that he needed his help. 
Now, I don't want to go too fast because I don't want you to forget the fact that this was a Gentile, and this Gentile still recognized the power of Almighty God, okay? This was a non-believer by way of religion, but this was a believer by way of spirit, and this spiritual person, y'all, called on the Lord. Okay, you're not getting it. This person didn't have a membership in the Presbyterian church or the Baptist church or the Catholic church or, or the house of prayer, but this member, this, this individual in the community knew that God could make a difference in the life of those around him. This individual recognized, Dr. Monroe, that if I call on Jesus, there will be a word and that word will give healing to my need. This man, this man, y'all, he was of the faith to know that I may not be religious, but I do have spirituality. And here's a word of caution for somebody on this Sabbath day. Just because you are not religious does not mean you don't have faith. Okay, let me say that again. Just because you don't have, quote, religion does not mean you don't have spirituality and faith. Because I found there is a difference, y'all, between religion and spirituality. Religion is an institution established by mankind, but spirituality is born in a person and develops in the soul. Religion is often forced. Spirituality is chosen. Religion can be anything that the person practicing it desires. Spirituality is defined by God. Religion is a manifestation of the flesh. Spirituality is a manifestation of God's nature. You don't, you can't tell me about him. I know too much about him, as the old song says. You see, I don't have to put it down on paper or read it in a book, but I know that God can make a way out of no way. I know that God can hear my faintness cry and answer by and by. I might not have all of your degrees, but I do know I have one degree and it's J-E-S-U-S -S, and it saves my soul, it heals my body, it directs my life and it gives, okay let me go back to the text because I got happy right there, got a little Pentecostal so let me come back to be Presbyterian. Amity don't tune out, be right with us, we are 100% fire baptized Presbyterian, here we are. True spirituality, y'all, is something that is found deep within oneself. True spirituality is found deep within oneself. It is your way of loving and accepting and relating to the world that is around you. So again, caution, just because you may not be religious, it does not mean you do not have faith. Verses 6 and 8 of this text, Brother L, tells us upon hearing the centurion's request and the positive testimony about Jesus, Jesus set off, shall we say, with a sense of saying, wow. And you see the centurion, y'all, again was drawn to Jesus because the centurion, a non-believer, a Jew, a, a Gentile, y'all, had observed and seen what the Jews and how their life had been transformed because of Jesus which is always a word of caution. If you who can claim that you are fire baptized, Holy Ghost filled, speaking in tongue, Presbyterian, book of order, carrying Bible token, cross around your neck, praise 100, you who call yourself, there ought to be something different in your life. People ought to be able to hear something different in your conversation. People ought to be able to see something different in your walk. Come on, help me somebody. There ought to be something about the way you live your life. There ought to be something about the songs that you sing. There ought to be something about the moves that you make. You ought to be able to do some kind of different dance when you are filled with the Holy Ghost. And people who don't come to church ought to see the church inside of you. 
You see, this man, y'all, he had a high view of Jesus according to the text, but he had a very humble view of himself. What does he say? He says, first of all, Jesus, come to my house and heal my servant, which I love. But then he sends another message. Hold up, time out, Jesus. I don't want you necessarily to come because I'm not worthy of you coming to my house. There's a pause right there, Brother George. We need to recognize because the church folk, the Jews says, Jesus, you got to hook this brother up because he built us this great synagogue. But this man says, hey, sugar baby, just because I built a synagogue, that does not mean I'm all that and then some. Okay, let me say it this way. The man recognized, y'all, that just because I had given some good on the outside, Sister Margaret, doesn't mean I ain't got no hell on the inside of my life. And you have to be careful, y'all, when we lift people up because they show up in church, because they sing a good song, because they shout hallelujah, and they run around talking about, oh, thank you, Jesus, praise the Lord. They may be full of hell, and you got to be careful when you lift them up and put God down. This man says, no, I am not worthy, but I do know that God, if you just say the word, God, if you just lift me up, God, if you just sit, okay, I'm ahead of myself because I want you to see what this text really tells us really. The man says, I am one of authority. I can say to one, go and they go. I can say to one, come and they come. And Jesus, I know you have a authority over the sickness that my servant is exposing. This was a major again in the army, a centurion in charge of 100 people reporting to him, but a part of 600 people and a legion of soldiers to which he was responsible for. This centurion, y'all, was, was, was saying basically, if I say the word, I don't have to speak to all of the soldiers. I just give the word by authority and they respond. I give the word by authority. You see, it's like retired General Lord Austin, the newly installed United States Secretary of Defense, the first African American to ever hold this post. This man born in Mobile, Alabama, raised in Thomasville, Georgia. Did I just sneak in a little bit of black history there for y'all? This Lord Austin, y'all, is the one in charge of the army. He doesn't have to go to Fort Bragg and Fort Seal and, and Fort Jackson all the time. He can just speak the word because he has authority. And I want to talk to somebody this Sunday morning who know Jesus for the redemption of your life and the salvation of your soul. You have a word. And if you speak that word over those situations in your life, like General Austin, you can speak a word and the word will make a difference. You can speak a word and life can come back. You can speak a word and health begins to come. You can speak a word and restoration could break, break, brings back the broken pieces. Just learn how to speak the word. The word, the word, the word is so powerful. Friends, the Bible tells us here that though this centurion, y'all, was humble enough to say, Jesus don't come to my house, he was assured, y'all, that if the Lord would speak the word, healing would come. See, I like the way Dr. Tony Evans says it. He says, the key to having truly great faith is to believe that the object of your faith is great. Hmm, okay. Let me back it up and say that again. The key to having truly great faith is to believe that the object of your faith is great. You see, when the messenger returned home, they found the servant, the Bible says, in good health. Jesus healed the man from a distance, rewarding the centurion's faith by doing exactly what the centurion believed that Jesus could do. The centurion, y'all, had great faith. 
And you see, that, that, that really helps me give my points for today, and my points are really taken from a book I was reading by Napoleon Hill. You remember Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill, who was talking about how you can improve yourself and pour things back into you, which will be a theme of this year. I want everybody watching and every member and every connection to the church to start improving yourself, start building yourself up, start reading to so you can be a better place person come the end of the year. Napoleon Hill says there are three things to which we have to recognize. He calls the QQAMA formula. The QQMA formula is the quality of service rendered, the quantity of service rendered, and the mental attitude of the service rendered. The fact, y'all, that the servant, the centurion uh, sent his servant was a miracle, not in the centurion, but because the fact that the centurion had a, a quality of his faith. And the first point I want to make here is that we have to have a quality in the service that we render to to one another and ultimately to Almighty God. We should not miss the point, my friends, that the centurion took advantage of the opportunity that came his way. The opportunity that came his way. The centurion, y'all, he was Holy Ghost filled. He was fire baptized. He had a sense that if I miss this opportunity, I don't need the healing myself, but I know somebody who needs the healing. I don't need the restoration myself, but I have enough sense and enough compassion that I can lift up somebody else. Right now in the chat box, there may be somebody that you say need to be lifted up, and we want to pray for them. It may be son, so you just type son. It may be daughter, so you type daughter. If you want to give the name, just type the situation right now. God, I need to pray not just for me, but for somebody else. The quality of my service that is rendered is not self-seeking or selfish, but it is all about somebody else. Going the extra mile, y'all, means tapping into the quality of service for some Body else. Come here, Miss Jacqueline Dundee. Jacqueline Dundee, don't know if you know her story, is a principal, Dr. Monroe, of an elementary school, charter school in Detroit, Michigan. And in the coronavirus pandemic, y'all, she began to recognize her students were not logging in, were not checking in. So she and her staff began to take this mantra, I need to make sure, she says, my kids are getting educa the education they deserve. Dr. Dun John Dungey, y'all, in Detroit began to make house calls, and these house calls showed up, y'all, when she was in the living room with students with a phone and an iPad making sure they were connected. Dr. Dungey, y'all, and her staff went the extra mile, and they got connected with their students. They said, we won't leave anybody behind during the crisis. Y'all understand when you have a quality about yourself, when you have a sense that I will not leave anybody behind, no child, no adult, no suffering person, no individual, then I will go the extra mile. I want you to understand this, y'all, is that this centurion teaches us a valuable lesson of quality, but also about quantity, 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 quantity of his life. Uh, 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 Napoleon Hill's second point is the quantity of the service you render is a part of your contribution. The military man, y'all, was a great man of authority, a centurion in the army. Again, over 100 men of the Roman legion, approximately six, excuse me, I said 606,000 soldiers. So this man, again, a major, shall we say, in the army was over people with authority, but he understood that the quality was also connected to the quantity. And the quantity means is that I can touch more people by the Spirit of God than I can do by myself. 
okay? We can be of a greater inspiration by the Spirit of God than we can be by ourselves. We can't seek but 220 of y'all in here. That's the normal way, and y'all got a place for your pocketbook, your coat, and your children, and everybody else. That's packed out. But guess what, y'all? We can reach 2,000 folk in about 45 minutes if you put share right now in the box. We can reach hundreds of folk if you repeat this service over and over again. We can increase our quantity by the spirit of Almighty God. You see, the Bible helps us realize is this centurion, y'all, was not just talking about the one man, the one servant, but if his one servant can get healed, guess what? He was going to tell everybody he knew about the power of God. Can you just type everybody right there? I need to tell everybody that God can make a way. I, I need to tell everybody that God hears my prayer. My cry. I need to tell everybody. Matter of fact, I said I wasn't going to tell nobody, but I just couldn't keep it to myself that all that God has done for me. When you shout hallelujah right there, when you know that God can and God will make a difference, you got to tell everybody. Oh, y'all, the good news of the text is the faith of the centurion and the power of Jesus united, y'all, and that meant that blessings were going to come. Let me say that again. The faith of the centurion and the power of Jesus hooked together and blessings would come. And never overlook the fact, y'all, that we don't have the power. Matter of fact, I said it a couple weeks in the prayer call. There is no power really in prayer, but there's power in the one that you pray into. You see, so don't worry about trying to pre preach like Peter and pray like Paul and giving those eloquent words and, and talking about all the... Just say, Lord, have mercy. Lord, give me strength. Lord, give me another chance. Lord, keep my mouth closed. Lord, hold my peace. Lord, let me just, just, oh, mm, okay, you know what? Right now, you can just type your Lord prayer, and Lord, dot, 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 and he hears your faintest cry. The centurion, y'all, he was a Gentile, and the Gentile told Jesus at a request of Jesus to come take care of his servant. The Gentile, or none, I can't emphasize that enough because, you see, we assume many times that Christian folk are the only ones that can get a prayer through. Mm -mm. The Bible says, whosoever will, let them come. The Bible says that, that, that whosoever has a desire, let them ask of the Lord. You see, Jesus healed the servant, this paralyzed servant of the centurion because of two things. There was a need and there was faith. And somebody need to write that right there on their hard drive. Whenever you got a need and faith, God's going to show up. The servant had a need and the centurion had the faith and Jesus could meet the need. The servant had a need, y'all. Uh, the centurion had the faith and Jesus met the It didn't say nothing about the servant having faith. He just had a need. You see, there are people in our lives right now who ain't got faith whatsoever, but we got the faith, they got the need, and we can hook them up to Jesus. You see, we've got the faith to know that God can make a way out of no way. We've got the faith to know that the prayer of a righteous person availeth much. We've got the faith, y'all, to know that, 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 that whatever we need in the name of the Lord, according to our belief in Almighty God, God will come through and see us through. We have the faith. Y'all know people with the need. We've got to hook the need in our faith and take it to Almighty God. You see, when you have a sense of, of, of faith and know there is a need, you can't help but to go with Chris Wobble. Chris Wobble, I don't know if you know his story from Madison, South Dakota. Madison, South Dakota, I, I'm all over the place today, y'all, is a math teacher, a middle school math teacher, Dr. Monroe, who recognized his students were going to fall behind. So he started making house calls, a middle school math teacher making house calls, and this teacher, y'all, 
Carl makes the house calls to give students a lesson on the front porch. Can you believe that? The teacher says, you got a need, I've got the faith, God's going to make this thing happen. And Chris, y'all, as a math teacher uh, in, Madison, in Madison, South Dakota, says people are nervous at a time like this. I just want to do something kind. Oh, come on, come on, come on. You is smart. You is... You, it, the good news, y'all, is when you recognize that I have the faith and you've got a need, God is going to bring us together. I can go the extra mile. I can go without fear. I can go in the confidence of Almighty God because I recognize, y'all, that as Jesus says, is that we've never seen anything like this in all of Israel. What you saying, preacher? You see, remarkable faith. Here's the quote in the tweet for the week. Remarkable Remarkable faith, y'all, was united with remarkable power, and the paralyzed man was healed. Remarkable faith and remarkable power always brings a healing. Going the extra mile, y'all, is seen in, in, in people all through history. A major shout out to that Presbyterian elder by the name of Lucy Craft Laney. Lucy Craft Laney from Augusta, Georgia, y'all, born in 1883 after, uh, after uh, enslavement of African people, y'all, established a school in Macon, Georgia for African Americans. Matter of fact, one of the first kindergartens in the Southeast for African Americans. Lucy Craft Laney, her portrait is hanging, y'all, in the Capitol building of the state of Georgia, put there by former governor, former president of the United States, Jimmy Carter. Lucy Craft Laney, here is her quote, sisters, you need to give a shout right here. She she was the mother of the children of the people. Here's her quote. She says what? A woman, uh, uh, she says, a woman who knew that God didn't use any different dirt to make me than the first lady of the land. This woman affirmed that I'm made out of the same substance that Eve was made of. I'm made from the same dirt uh, that Hannah was made from. I'm made from the same dirt of Deborah, the same dirt of Elizabeth, the same dirt of the Virgin Mary, the same dirt. I'm made of the same dirt. And she says that dirt using the power of Almighty God can elevate and educate. Here's my last point. Here's my last point. You see, you have to have quality and quantity, but the right mental attitude, the right mental attitude will help you go the extra mile. The right mental attitude, y'all, it helps us realize it's not about me, but it is about all Almighty God. The centurion, y'all, professed a faith in Jesus Christ in such a way uh, that he was not a Jew, but he had the right mental attitude that God can make a difference in the lives of those around him. When you pray, you have to have the right mental attitude. Got to quote my dear friend, the Reverend Dr. Howard John Wesley from the Alpha Street Church, for he says, real faith, y'all, expects a yes, but genuine faith can endure a no. Mm. Real faith, it expects God to say yes to your plea, but, 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 ooh, mature faith can say, God, if you don't give it to me now, I still love you. God, if you don't come when I ask, I'm still going to serve you. God, if you don't give it to me at this present moment, I'm still going to give thanks and glory for who you are. Is there anybody watching right now who can say, I don't know if I have the real faith, but I got some what we call genuine faith to know that he may not come when you want to, but he's always right on time. Oh, the good news, y'all, is that, is that we have to have a sense of genuine faith about ourselves. This man said, Lord, first of all, come to my house. Then he said, Lord, don't worry about it. You just stay right where you are, but say the word. 
Say, say, say the word, say the word. Let me see if I can close because I've been talking about going the extra mile and I need you to jump in your car with me right now and get on the highway as we go down 77 until we get, get, until we get to 20 and 26 and I need us to hang a left on my way to Charleston, South Carolina. I'm gonna go, y'all, about 208 miles, an extra mile. I need you to go with me to George, North Charleston because in North Charleston, I I want you to hear the story of Henry, Henry Dabney. Henry Dabney, y'all, is a high school principal, a high school principal, y'all, who recognized my students are hurting and my students are in a crisis, and the principal, y'all, says, I'm gonna do something about this. This high school principal in North Charleston, y'all, took a night shift job at the Walmart. He is stocking shelves, y'all. He is pulling boxes together and putting items on the shelf so that the check that he makes from Walmart, all of it goes to his students in need. You missing that. The principal, y'all, is working night shifts three days a week and still being a principal, but his check it's not to go to him, it's not to go to his retirement. All of the money he makes at Walmart goes to his students and his former students who are sleeping in cars. His, his students, he says, when they go to their house, and it's dark because there's no electricity. This individual is going the extra mile, y'all. And I want you to see how God blessed him because he was faithful over a few things. On the Today Show, they had a picture of the Walmart executives coming out to North Charleston High School, and he did not know this, but Walmart, y'all, presented a check to North Charleston High School of $50,000 so they can help some students. See if I can help somebody uh, along the way as I travel along. If I can help somebody with a word or song, then my living may not be in vain. I just want somebody to know the day that God is calling you to go the extra mile. God is pleading for you to go the extra mile. God is giving us an invitation right now to be like the centurion, to be like Principal Dabney, to be like Principal Jacqueline, to be like the math teacher in South Dakota, to be be like, like Lucy Craft Laney, to be like all of those we've talked about, just to help somebody go the extra mile. I got to give this invitation for somebody to go the extra mile today in your faith. For you have a broken relationship with God or no relationship at all. Yes, you've been watching, but, but I need you now to make a connection. I need you to, to whoever you may be, to say, you know what, preacher, I'm watching you right now, and I need to get hooked up to a body of Christ. And we say it here at C. and Jenkins all the time. You can be a part of this church. Amity is watching. You can be a part of Amity. You can be part of any church in the world. I, I personally will write a letter of recommendation once I find out who you are so that you can be a part of somebody's ministry. But I don't want you to miss this opportunity because God is calling you in this month, this year, to go the extra mile to help somebody. And I pray that you get that help through the power of God. Pray with me. Lord God, we thank you now for a chance to extend an invitation to be in relationship with you. God, we know that we can't make it on our own. God, we confess that we might be like that centurion. We're not in church. We don't know church language, don't know church code. And matter of fact, we don't like hanging out with people who say they've been in church. But God, I don't need church. I, I need Christ. I need a relationship today. So God, help me now just to confess and, and say I want to do better. God, I've been in church and I've been hurt by church. But I realize as the preach word has come, I, I now need to have a relationship with you. And so God, I just wanna yield my will. I wanna stop doing me and I start now doing you. Thank you, God, for a chance to start over again. In Jesus' name we pray.
we can make a difference in your life, don't hesitate to call us. This is Pastor Jerry Cannon. I'm so glad that you join us today. It's been a joy, it's been a pleasure to be in worship with you. May God bless you, may God keep you. May heaven shine upon you this day and forever. Y'all have a wonderful Sabbath day.